What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell, and this is Not For The Week Of Heart. Today is a somber day when we take the time to remember the day so many lives were taken and the entire world changed. 9-11 has affected and still affects so many people and I believe that on 9-11 the spirit of fear was released upon the world, especially upon the US, and with fear came the slowly removal of freedom. And I'm not even talking about physical freedom. I'm talking about spiritual freedom. Look at what the author of Hebrews writes. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 through 15. It says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So according to the author of the book of Hebrews, inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course, fear, specifically the fear of death, subjects its victims to slavery. This isn't the only time that we see this either. Look what Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. According to both the author of Hebrews and Paul, to give in to fear is to be a slave. And to be a slave means that we have not been perfected in love. Because look what John wrote in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. He said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Fear separates us from God. It's a deal breaker for God. Why? Because when we give in to fear, we are giving into a spirit. There's no difference between giving into fear and giving in to any other sin. Look what Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. He said, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Don't be deceived. Fear is a spirit. It demands that its victims bow down before it and worship at its feet. And give it complete control over their lives. Look what God says in Revelation 21 verse 6 through 8. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake of fire that burns with salt, with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now this word here translated as cowardly is the Greek word delos, which means fearful or afraid. It's used two other times in scripture in Matthew 8, 26 and Mark 4:40 and we'll read those a little a little later. So God doesn't say that you know those who are fearful will be comforted. Those who are fearful they will have peace. No, instead he says their portion is in the lake of fire with the rest of the sinners, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the liars, the idolaters. He doesn't separate them. He calls them out first. They are the first whose portion is in the lake of fire, the second death, hell. So let's read those other two verses. Matthew 8, verse 26. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And Mark chapter 4, verse 40. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Notice how Jesus connects being afraid to the lack of faith. This is really important to understand because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. We have to believe that God exists and that he will keep us safe, that he will be with us, that he will reward our faith in him and protect us. Look at how we receive salvation. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. 
It is only by faith that we are saved. And if we dwell in fear, then we don't have faith. And if we don't have faith, then we can't please God. And, and if we can't please God, then we can't be saved. So if fear is a sin, how do you overcome fear? Well, the only way to overcome fear is to build your faith. And the only way to build your faith is to know who God is, which can only be done by spending time in his word as well as spending time in prayer and worship. We can't expect to get to know God without spending time with him. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In other words, he's already done his part. He's already called you. He's already, he's already died for you. Jesus put it this way. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So we have to seek after God. We have to seek his presence. We have to read his word so that we can know who he is, so that we can learn how great he is and fully understand that once we are in his love, no one can separate us from his love. And I'm not and I don't mean that, you know, we can't ever give up our salvation. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean that death won't separate us. Angels nor demons can separate us. No one can separate us from the love of God. When we dwell in his love and we abide in his love, nothing can separate us. That's what we need to get to a point where we fully understand who God is and what he does for us every single day. So just to sum everything up for you guys, fear is a spirit that demands its victims to bow down and submit everything to it so that it has complete control over them. When we give in to fear, we begin to separate ourselves from God because of the lack of faith. The only way to overcome fear is to dwell in faith and in love. And the only way to do that is to spend time in the scripture and in prayer and worship. We have to spend time with God. We have to get to know him. How can we have faith in someone that we don't know? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it answered any questions that you may have had about fear. And if you have any questions or maybe we missed something, let us know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.